G'day guys, Blake here with another video and recently I've been chatting with a few of you out there about shrimp and diagnosing some issues with you. So today I wanted to give you a whole bunch of tips of what to do before getting shrimp for the first time. It can be a bit of a tricky process but I believe if you do all these things that I'm about to say you'll be very successful and you'll be uh, harvesting shrimp in no time. So let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so when keeping shrimp, the most important thing is to make sure that there's a high level of availability of food in the beginning. And shrimp, they're not really gonna be ones where you can throw an algae wafer in from day one and it will be perfect. They need a, a diverse range of um, micro crustaceans and biofilm in their diet. So the biggest thing for me is to months in advance, six months in advance if you can, get the tank, set it up, and uh, allow it to develop and grow that sort of microbiome. So that involves getting the actual tank in itself and I'd recommend anything from about 10 gallons or 40 liters and up for a colony of about 10 shrimp to start off with. I put a sponge filter in there because I find that sponge filters, they add a bunch of aeration into the tank, which if you're not aware, cherry shrimp in particular and other dwarf shrimp they come from very highly oxygenated waterways, high flowing rivers and things like that. So they do need a high oxygen saturation in the water. So that's one of the reasons I really like sponge filters. As well as that, sponge filters catch a lot of the debris on the outside of the sponge, which means that the shrimp can actually go and graze on that and have a readily available food source. So it does have a bit of a two in one benefit there where it keeps the debris out of the water column, but it also allows the shrimp to continue to feed on it once it is in the tank. It doesn't export it somewhere else like a hang on back or canister filter does, where it'll be out of there and the shrimp won't be able to further break it down, actually doing you a favor. The next thing I'd do is get some high quality shrimp aqua soil, something that's gonna be sort of a fired clay ball in a rounded shape. Nothing too sharp because they can sort of cut and nick at shrimp. So I would avoid sharp substrates for sure because you might create some bacterial issues with those open wounds. Uh, the round clay is gonna be quite porous and again, uh, provide a nice food source for the shrimp to be able to maneuver it around and pick apart um, different bits of debris in the substrate. It's gonna help to buffer the pH as well, but be mindful that caridina and neocaridina shrimp require very, very different water parameters. So research that before getting them as well. But Overall, something like a master soil or a fluval stratum, I think is a great way to start off a shrimp tank. I'd get some moss in there because moss is going to have the kind of the starter culture for the microbiome, especially since it's been grown in a, in a fish tank underwater, presumably. So it's going to have lots of seed shrimp, copepods and other things like that in it that will really get this um, microculture started of what we want for the shrimp to eventually feed on. So I'd put some moss in there as well and uh, get a light on there and just allow the tank to mature. It's gonna be a bit strange kind of just having a tank in the corner for six months and there is gonna be a real temptation to go out and get the fish the next week or the next two weeks, but please, please res resist. And uh, you can even ghost feed the tank for a little while by placing a very, very small amount of food in there just for it to break down feed these little uh, critters in there and keep the cycle going. So uh, that's definitely how I'd set up the tank and allow it to mature. Another good idea is to add in, obviously some dechlorinator, but some kind of bacterial uh, additive. There is a good product called Bacta AE, which is actually a shrimp food. Uh, but um, in a pinch, I'm, I'm quite like these pure aquarium bowls at the moment. They're sort of a self-contained uh, bowl which has some great startup bacteria. Uh, yeah, I'm at no obligation to talk about this whatsoever, but uh, yeah, I do really quite like these at the moment and I found them to be quite handy. So I'd probably put a few of those in there and uh, especially in the early days, just to allow everything to continue to build and, and, and you know, grow that stable foundation for when the shrimp do go in. I think it's a good idea at this stage to test the water even if you can wait about two or three months until everything's stable and that aqua soil has released any of the nutrients that it's going to release. 
After that, do a decent water change, give it another couple of weeks and then get the water tested. That will tell you particularly what your GH and KH are gonna be. And that is gonna be really important for shrimp because uh, KH is your carbonate hardness and GH is your general hardness. Uh, but general hardness revolves around uh, calcium and magnesium and carbonate hardness is obviously carbon and calcium. So um, in general, what you want to do is make sure that you have availability of both of those factors. The KH is going to keep your water nice and stable for the shrimp, which is really critical. And the availability of calcium is going to mean that you're going to have some nice healthy malts in the aquarium. I'm by no means a chemist, but for me, uh, out of the tap water, I have naturally occurring zero KH and zero GH. So I place a calcium additive in the form of Calgrit, which is a common uh, chicken feed in the back of my aquarium, just so that the shrimp can have an available source of calcium and some healthy molds. So by understanding your water parameters ahead of time, you're gonna diagnose these, these issues before you're starting to see you know, shrimp fatalities in the tank and it can be really heartbreaking. So it's really good to forecast these things beforehand. Next up, I'd have some shrimp food on hand. Uh, there are a variety of great shrimp feeds, depending on what you're planning to keep as well. You can do some research at this point in time and pick up some good ones. Uh, there's things like shrimp cuisine from Hikari, which I've found to be quite good, but uh, don't, uh, you can sort of get away with just feeding normal fish foods, but it is better to feed a purpose-made uh, shrimp food because it's gonna have a lower copper content, which shrimp are really sensitive to, and it's gonna have calcium and other additives in it which are gonna create nice healthy malts, strong shells and things like that. Um, so if you can source some good quality shrimp food, that's gonna help as well to ease the transition across. After that, it's pretty much a, a, just a story of waiting the appropriate amount of time until you get your shrimp. Uh, but make sure you don't add in any fish or other things that might be considered predators. Keep an eye out for things like hydro and planaria. That might be an issue for baby shrimp in particular. Um, if you want to keep on hand something called planaria zero or no planaria, there's some really effective uh, medicines that can get rid of either of those two pests. So that's probably a good idea to keep on hand uh, up front as well. And then you're pretty much ready to get your shrimp. So to acclimate your shrimp, you're gonna drip acclimate them, which I've shown you how to do that in videos before. Uh, the easiest way I've found to set it up is via a piece of airline tubing like this with a tap on one end. That way you can control the dripping on it. The tap, especially if you get a stainless steel one, will help to weight down that one side. The other end, you can put an air stone on it and that will make sure that nothing from the tank is gonna go into the new tank. And um, the other end, you can place an air stain on it if you like, or just weight it under a rock and just slowly drip the um, aquarium water in until it fills up about uh, twice as much as was existing from the bag of shrimp water so that you'll know they're nice and comfortable with the new parameters. After the drip acclimation process is finished, you're free to catch the shrimp and put them into your tank. I wouldn't recommend putting the tank water from your shrimp source in the new tank because we spent so long uh, getting this tank to be in a pristine condition for uh, new shrimp. We don't want to accidentally add in any ammonia from the shipping process or the bagging process or any other chemicals or nasties from whatever tank these shrimp have come from. And that's pretty much it. From that point, you can have as much fun as you like. You can place some more plants if you like, floating plants as well. You can get all sorts of shrimp hides like this one here that I 3D printed. You can um, experiment with, with whatever you like really. You can put uh, other leaves and botanicals in there like Indian almond leaves, they'll find that really good. And I find that mine really, really like mulberry leaves as well, if you can get your hands on some. The other thing as well to keep in mind is that shrimp babies, they're not gonna move around very much. So you're gonna wanna feed a light powdered food to the shrimp babies when you do eventually have them because you really need the food to kind of go right in front of their face otherwise they're not really going to be able to venture over to eat whatever food you are placing in there so you can sort of make it yourself by putting normal food or shrimp food whatever you're feeding in a nutribullet or something like that or a mortar and pestle and crushing it down or well, there are a bunch of shrimp uh, fry foods as well available um, but have fun with it really i think 
Um, a lot of people find shrimp keeping very stressful and for me 90% of those cases are not giving it the time to set up in the first place. Uh, once you do have a properly set up environment, I believe it's pretty effortless and I've kept shrimp at this stage uh, sort of unheated, heated, in no filter tanks, uh, in filter tanks, in with other fish and all sorts of different ways and once they're really comfortable in your fish room and in your environment, they're really really hardy and easy to keep but um, the biggest thing is having a nicely matured uh, environment for them to first come into and from that point you'll be on an easy street. So hopefully you like this video. If it has helped you out, it always helps me to smash like, hit subscribe and all that fun stuff. And other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.